a man and a teenager are still in custody. Opposition parties in Israel have struck a deal to form a new government with oust Benjamin Netanyahu, the country's longest serving Prime Minister. Eight parties have formed a coalition under a rotation agreement. The head of the right wing party, Yamina Naftali Bennett, who served as Prime Minister first before handing over to Yair Lapid, who is leader of the centrist Yeshati party. The Israeli parliament needs to vote on the plans before the new government can be formed. Thousands of current and former Tesco workers have won a legal argument in their fight for equal pay. Tesco workers, mainly women, argue that they fail to achieve equal pay for work of equal value with colleagues in its distribution centres, who are mostly men. Well now, the European Court of Justice has ruled that an EU law can be relied on in making the equal pay pay. It is one of the most recognisable items of clothing in history, and now Princess Diana's wedding dress is going back on public display at Kensington Palace for the first time in the 14th century. Any prices were short now, but have some flashing images. <laughs> Even the Archbishop of Canterbury described the day as the stuff of fairy tales. 750 million people tuned in worldwide to watch. 600,000 people tried to see for themselves along the route from St. Paul's to Buckingham Palace. Diana is left the wedding, but marks the moment a huge shift in the relationship between public and class and the royal family. It was the beginning of young mania, this huge obsession with this young, 20-year-old girl, this hectic obsession with her that was never going to wear. The wedding took place on a warm Wednesday in late July, almost 14 years ago. It was a bank holiday, and for those who didn't lie in the streets of London, it was a sense of viewing on the telly. What were you doing that day? Um, I got dressed up in my mum's wedding dress and what the royal wedding. I told Ray, I was like, six, and I was seven, six. It was a long time ago. It was, yeah, and so I was like, 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 for the first time in 25 years at Kensington Palace. All 25 feet of train, 10,000 mother of pearl sequins, and lots and lots of pieces of ruffles. Along with the other items in the collection, including this life-size test garment of the coronation gown of Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, from 1937, it's a challenge to keep these dresses in their full royal glory. So once we install the master of the environment going, we look at things like the humidity, the temperature, uh, pests, which is also a very good problem. Everything is packed in acid food boxes and tissue paper, and then obviously things that are on display, the slightly different criteria, so we look at light levels. But we also do a little bit of hands-on conservation work. The dress has been loaned to the exhibition by her sons, the princes. It goes on display just a few weeks before what would have been Diana's 60th birthday. A bittersweet reminder that life is rarely as simple as happily ever after. Ah, that's what everybody's been waiting for. Any part of that report? Uh, Lisa is coming up next for the BBC News Six in just a few moments. First, have a look at the weather forecast in Cambridge. Good evening. After the very warm weather we had earlier on this week, today temperatures drop back just a little for most of us. And we take that slightly cooler feel with us into the next few days. It will be mostly dry, but not completely dry. And actually during the day, we saw clouds and some patchy rain pushing up from the south, affecting the Channel Islands and some showing clouds in England. And it's all because of this weather front here, slightly spoiling our mostly dry story, bringing some outbreaks of rain quite erratically northwards, I have to say, across our eastern parts of England, into East Anglia, as we head through this evening into tonight and particularly into tomorrow. But there is still a lot of uncertainty about the detail of this rainfall. We are also going to see some cloud bringing some showery rain into western counties of Northern Ireland. Elsewhere, largely clear through the night. Quite a mild and muggy start across eastern areas where we will see some showery rain at times during tomorrow. And also this cloud bringing some showers into western parts of Northern Ireland and the odd shower elsewhere too. But most places are looking dry. 
So, as I mentioned, the uncertainty about the exact behaviour of this wet weather, particularly just how far west it will get. I think we will see some rain at times into the London area, certainly across parts of East Anglia. But for much of the rest of England and Wales, it's fine with some sunshine. These temperatures, high teens, low 20s, about what we'd expect at this time of year. More cloud bringing some rain into the west of Northern Ireland and the odd road shower popping up across Scotland although many spots will be fine. Temperatures in Aberdeen perhaps up to 19 degrees. Now, as we head into the weekend, high pressure will always be close by, so that means there will always be a lot of dry weather. But the frontal system pushing in from the west will bring clouds and some showery rain into Northern Ireland and western Scotland. This front will be a weakening affair, but it could uh, bring the odd heavy shower as we head through Saturday afternoon. But for eastern Scotland, down into England and Wales, it would be largely dry with spells of sunshine. Temperatures between 18 and 23 degrees. And that weather front will still be with us into Sunday, but you can't see much evidence of it on the chart. Just a bit more in the way of clouds developing through the day. The odd shower here and there. Most places seeing some sunshine and temperatures ranging from 18 in Glasgow to 23 in London. When girls out of wedlock were regarded as shameful, thousands of unmarried young women in the UK had their babies taken from them. <coughs> they were shamed, harassed, and bullied, but never had a formal apology. Hear their stories in.